The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. This is Ken Curro, Market Development Agronomist for Pride Seeds. It's early June and we're in one of our Pride 300 bushel initiative fields near London, Ontario. We've just received a couple inches of rain over the last three or four days. Uh, still a little bit wet in here, but it was much needed rain and has really spruced up this particular crop. And uh, really happy with what we're seeing here. Uh, of interest to me in this field is uh, this cooperator participated in the project last year. You'll be able to pick up through the course of uh, through the course of our presentation here that uh, we're in 20 inch rows and just amazing dirt. Uh, this is uh, this is just fantastic premium stuff here. Um, obviously, it looks a little bit dark from the moisture in it from the rain, but this is uh, this is fantastic soil here. Really premium stuff. Um, of interest to me is uh, you know can we further take advantage of this great growing medium? Last year uh, uh, in this project, we noticed that the uh, planter, the seedling spacing wasn't very good with this planter, and, and really begged for some improvement. And the grower took care of that over the winter. And I wanted to evaluate his spacing today. I know uh, his comments from, from spring planting, which for him was basically uh, uh, third week of April. Uh, planting date for this field is April 16th, I believe. But uh, comments from him is uh, the, the planter monitor was just uh, bang on 98% plus through most of his acres this year. So he was really happy. And uh, looking at the stand here, yeah, the improvement certainly, uh, it's, it's quite obvious target population here actually was in the low 40s, uh, 40 to 42,000. If you look at the spacing on the tape rule here, in 20 inch rows that would be about a 7 to 7.5 inch spacing. And if you average out these five, six plants, one of which I've dug up here, now that's about what we've achieved and that's, that's pretty good spacing right in through here for the most part in a 20 inch row. We're going to be very satisfied with that. The other thing I wanted to assess going into the rapid growth stage for this corn crop is root development and if you look at root development overall just hold that up like that get that initial leaf out of the way you know it's a nice fern of initial roots there and our secondary roots are starting to come the great indication those roots are straight down versus last year when we had a wet June a lot of those secondary roots stayed upright or hit a hard pan basically at the at the bottom of the cultivated layer you'd see something like that this is the way this root is coming out of the ground with the or the this is the way this root is penetrating the soil basically just going straight down to anchoring this this seedling so that's fantastic news we also noted uh, planting depth when we dug this up and uh, basically running about an inch and a half here which in this soil is uh, really all you need it's, it's a virtual garden here I wouldn't mind seeing it a hair deeper but I'm satisfied with an inch and a half it's certainly not holding us back as a yield limiting factor so I'm uh, pretty impressed right there there's the, the seed right there and you can pretty much see the, the dirt layer there so about an inch and a half so the other thing we're seeing in this field and, and some would view it as an ailment but it's really not it's just uh, more of an eyesore is uh, this particular hybrid is showing some rapid growth syndrome. And that's basically a, an appearance of buggy whipping or roping in the emerging new tissue. A little bit of chlorosis and that's basically, it's exactly as it sounds. We see that bit of a lean on it and that chlorosis and, and the wrapping up in the new leaves. It is rapid growth. The plant is literally growing too fast for the rate at which it can metabolize and photosynthesize uh, uh, nutrients and make basically green tissue in the new leaves. This will unwrap over time and it's also proven not to cause any yield loss. It's just more of an eyesore. We'll come back to this from day to day. We'll see this plant will grow out of it. We'll see maybe this plant, you know, struggling a bit more and we'll see plants that are kind of in the onset of rapid growth. They'll be all different stages. We'll see a little bit of a bleached appearance from leaf to leaf in the new tissue over the next couple weeks but again no yield loss so the next question would be where do we go from here with this field well we've taken our shovel and we've looked at the root development and we've looked at the stand the spacing and we're really happy and is 300 bushels on the table mother nature needs to cooperate certainly this rain came just in time is a mid to high 200 number on the table certainly i'm really uh, i'm excited about this one we've seen an improvement in plant spacing um, the soil worked great compared to last year. It's actually planted a month earlier than last year, almost to the day. So we bought ourselves an extra month in the growing season. 
and basically from here all the nitrogen is down on this field the weed control is there again using integrity herbicide from BSF it was uh, you know it's fantastic weed control uh, it's ready to go basically the next step is to put headline on a tassel keep it healthy till harvest hope for good pollination weather from mother nature and we'll be on our way to a really nice yield in this farm